To me, butchery is an art form. You're able to translate your skill and your art into your finished product. You're basically whittling down meat like you would whittle down wood. And there's a lot of pride when a butcher has a table filled with steaks that are all basically identical in size and shape. It's a job, it's a skill set, but it's also artwork. Pat Lafrida the third CEO of Pat Lafrida Meat Purveyors. I used to be Pat Lafrida Jr., now I'm senior, now my son is junior. be impossible to do this unless I had the, the foundation to, to start with. I mean, the knowledge of my father and my grandfather before that, I mean, they, they were very concentrated in the, the butchering aspect of what we were doing. But to actually get the word out and to market how special it was what they were doing, didn't really have much insight into that. But the building blocks all came from the generations before. You know, my dad is my hero, so as a kid looking up to him and what he did, I always wanted to do what he did. This is our dry age room. This is teetering on about $1.7 million worth of beef at any given time aging. What we're doing is we're controlling the decomposition of the meat. And as you can see, this is mostly 90 day dry age product and you can see how it divots in where the fat and the bone have not receded but the protein has because the, the moisture has come out. Down here are all tomahawk steaks. This is for the New York Yankee Steakhouse which is their high-end um, steakhouse at the stadium and on this side all of these tomahawks are reserved for Steve Wynn at the Wynn and the Encore in, in Vegas. After college, I graduated with a finance degree and I went straight to Wall Street. I just hated it. I couldn't stand selling intangibles to strangers over the telephone, knowing for the most part that we were not gonna make them money. In the back of my head, I just wanted to join the family business but I kept getting resistance from him. He did not want me in. I actually had to go through a side broker, which was his sister. I never regretted this, doing this. I, in fact, a matter of fact, I got to enjoy doing it. But I dedicated mostly my life to the meat plant. And I didn't want to see, I wanted him to, to live an easier, better life than working in a plant all, all the time, even though I loved it. And it's in our blood. Look, Frieda's all my father, my my uncles, my grandfather were all the same. All, everything was the meat company. That was their life, the meat company, day and night. And I didn't, I figured, you know, hey, he went to college, he'd come out, have an easier life, enjoy things. I tried to, you know, you always make the next generation have a, a better time than you did. And it's usually passed on that way. But he insisted on taking it on. And he's just as bad as the rest of us. Can't stop him either. Hey, you know, times are a little bit different than my time. I mean, it was a little rough on my days. I mean, we went through a lot of rough days. Uh, transit strikes, sanitation strikes, and police went and walked out. It was all kinds of crazy things that happened over the years. Uh, gas shortages, you couldn't, you couldn't get a gallon of gas. I had trucks to get all over the place. Couldn't get a gallon of gas. It was siphoning gas out of cars into trucks. It was a lot of rough times. I didn't want to put him through that. He didn't want to put me through that by showing me that because that was the first time I tasted gasoline was helping him <laughs> siphon gas out of, a, out of a car into the van. I told him not to swallow it, to siphon it. <laughs> <laughs> All of these orders are called in now, between now and let's say 2 a.m. And our uh, computer system will spit out the specs on adhesive labels, which these guys then follow and then it put onto the product. Like, this is something that when I started, this was all handwritten. So to be able to get an accounting system that could follow such a niche market, 
I mean, it took a couple years to develop and to customize. As, as of now, I, I, I'm pretty sure when my, my dad was about my age, he would have said the same thing I'll tell you now. I, I can't see anyone taking this over right now from me. Well, I'm still here every night uh, throughout production and work the night shift. I mean, that's when all the important things happen and that's when the magic happens. So it remains to be seen if my 10-year-old son will be able to fill those shoes. Right now it looks like my daughter at five is more of the fighter and my son is more of the lover. One of the greatest things that I learned from my father and my, from, from my grandfather is not to deviate from what we do, just to do it better every day. And we're the meat men. Stay the meat men. Everything here will be consumed by tomorrow night. Not even 24 hours from now, it'll be on someone's plate being ingested. People constantly ask me, Pat, what's, what's your business plan? I've seen a lot of business plans. I've never seen any of them actually go the way that they were written. My business plan was to follow in the steps of my father, who followed in the steps of his father, and just to be bigger and better at what we do every day. And, and just in following that as a plan, that's what's got, gotten us to here. And that's what will get us to the next level of distribution, which will be nationally. Mm -hmm.